Good afternoon. Um, this is the first of four example problems we're going to do, and here are our formulas. We're starting with the 90 degree formulas, which our setback is equal to our material thickness plus bend radius. Our bend allowance for 90 degrees is 0 0.702 material thickness plus 1.57 bend radius. Our non-90 degree formulas, I do need to point out, I didn't point out in the last video, if you substitute 90 degrees in for our K, so half of that is 45, the tangent of 45, that needs to be K equals tangent of 1 half theta. So tangent of, of 45 degrees will turn out to be 1 and this K would drop off. You can use all of these formulas instead of those formulas even if you've got a 90 degree angle, but you can't use these formulas on a non 90 degree angle. All right, these are the formulas we're going to use. This is the problem we're going to do. In this case, we have a piece of material. It is 60,000 thick, and we have a bend radius of 3 sixteenths of an inch, 0.1875. We have a one inch flat coming across and a two inch flat going away. This is gonna be like a little angle that would hold something up, like a structural angle. And we need to lay this out. Now, use paper and pencil. It's easier to keep track of things if you've got paper and pencil. Assuming that we were going to start on a piece of aluminum and bend it, if we were just going to the mole point dimensions, our piece of aluminum would look just like this, where we first have a one inch piece and then have a two inch piece, and we'd fold it and that'd be our angle. But we know that we don't get to do that the simple way. In fact, we have to have a shorter flat and then we have to sweep around the corner like this, and then we have to have a longer flat. So we're going to take this theoretical amount, which by the way, does not work, and uh, Big old X across that, we can't do that. What we are going to have instead is going to be a piece and then a bend tangent line beginning our bend, sweep around the corner, end our bend, and another flat that comes across here. This is going to be called our developed blank across this area. And we know that this is going to be one inch minus however far we get to set back from the corner. So one inch minus our setback. This flat is going to be the distance from here, sweeping around the corner, over to here. That's just our bend allowance. And this piece is going to be two inches wide, minus the amount that we lost here, the setback. And so now we're going to try and put some numbers into this. Now the good news is, we have formulas that allow us to calculate the numbers. So we need to calculate the setback, and the bend allowance, so we can substitute everything into here. Luckily, our formulas are back. So, first of all, let's do our setback. Setback equals, this is a 90 degree bend, so I can use my original formulas. Setback at 90 equals our material thickness plus our bend radius. Our material thickness was 60 thousandths, so 0 0.060, plus our bend radius, point 1875, and that is going to give us our setback. Now, luckily, we have these little calculator boxes that help us when we aren't so good with math ourselves. I entered the 60 thousandths plus the 0.1875, and I get 0.2475. Our setback equals 0.2475 inches. Our bend allowance, and we're going to substitute the numbers in over here, equals 0 0.702 times our material thickness, which is 0 0.060 plus 1.57 times our bend radius, and our bend radius is 0.1875. So let's simplify. Over here, 0 0.702 plus 0 0.060 gives us a total of 0 0.762. That looks wrong. Let me try that again. That didn't uh, pass the realism test. 
must have entered something wrong there because two small numbers times each other are something even smaller. Let's try again. 0 0.702 times 0 0.060. Oh yeah, that looks a lot more realistic. How about 0 0.042? 0 0.042 times 0 0.060. That's this term right here. Okay, that becomes 0 0.042 plus over here 1.57 times 0.1875 gives us a value of 0.294. So our bend allowance is equal to 0 0.042 plus 0.294, and that is 0.2, make that 0.336. Bend allowance equals, let me check my math, that's 6, that's 13, yep, 3, 3, uh, 3, 6, and that becomes 3. So 0.336 inches. Now we're going to write this over here because that's what we were calculating, 0.336. That's the distance from this bend tangent line to this bend tangent line. Now, we need our setbacks. Luckily, we have a formula for setback. And we already calculated it, didn't we? Setback equals material thickness plus bend radius equals 0 0.060 plus 0 0.1875 equals point... I should have remembered this before I erased. 0 0.06 plus 0 0.1875 gives us 0 0.247 or 0 0.248 rounding to 0.248. So we're going to come over here and substitute 0.248 in place of our setback. 1 minus 0.248. 2 minus 0.248. And now we're going to do our math to find out what each of these values are. Give us a little more room to work over here because these things get pretty big. You go through a lot of paper when you do the problems. That is 0 0.752, and this is 1.752. So the distance from here to here, continuing these lines across, 1.752 plus 0.336 plus 0.752, and the total width of our developed flat which is one of the things we need to know, is going to be equal to 0.752, that first number, plus 0.336, that's the second number, plus 1.752. That's equal to our total. Now, I can't do that in my head, but my calculator can do it. 0.752 plus 0.336 plus 1.752, and it spits out an answer at me 2.84 inches. 2.84 equals the total. We're going to come over here, 2.84, and you'll recall I told you that there is a reality check. And the reality check is, this should be a little less than the total amount would be if we didn't cut the corner. This would be 3. This is 2.84. That's a very realistic number. Now, how do we actually put this onto a piece of sheet metal and go to bend it? So here's our piece of sheet metal. We're going to cut it off across here, and then we're going to make that fold to make it into an angle. And I'm going to come over here, and I know that we're going to cut it off at... 2.84 inches, which is going to be right about here. Now, normally I'd use a caliper, but since we don't have enough room for that, I'm just trying to demonstrate. So about 2.84 inches. And this would be the line that we're going to cut 
for our piece of sheet metal right across here. And this would be however long we need to make this stringer. I mean, it might be a 12 foot long stringer that we're making, but we've got our cut line, okay? Cut line, and then I'm just gonna put a little X across there because that's what we're cutting off. The next thing I need to do is put in my bend tangent lines. And since I like lots of colors, we're gonna put in our bend tangent lines in red. Um, doesn't really mean anything, but here's our bend tangent lines in red. Okay, our first bend tangent line was at 0.752. That's what we calculated. That's right here. And I'm gonna put two marks over here so I can mark it nice and uh, bend everything in the proper location. We're gonna make our mark. By the way, I'd use a much more precise Sharpie if I were getting ready to do this in real life. Here's our first flat. Okay, the FAA would call this flat A. Um, then we got a sweep around the corner, 0 0.336. 0 0.336 for our next bend tangent line is approximately right there. 0.336 is right there. Here is our next flat that we're going to put in. Or not our next flat, but this is our next bend tangent line. It comes in right across here. And our bend is going to begin here. It's going to end here. This was 0.336. This was 0.752. And our flat B was equal to 1.752. Let's check. And certainly as accurate as my, cal my ruler can be, I'm seeing it just under 1.75 with one and three quarters, this looks good. We would cut this and we'd stuff this into the break, but we can't see where to bend it, so we still need to put our sight line in. And for our sight line, I'm gonna grab yet another color, because I like color. And we're gonna make our sight line. Our sight line is always one bend radius away from one of the bend tangent lines. And that was 3 sixteenths away, so I'm gonna hold my ruler up, and at 3 sixteenths of an inch, I'm gonna make my mark. I'm gonna make my other mark at 3 16 of an inch, and we are going to put our green sight line in. And this is the spot that we're actually going to see at the bending, on the edge of the radius call of the bending break when we go to bend that. Notice it's not quite in the center. Now, we measured 3 16 from this line, so this is the line that needs to go into the bending break and we'll be ready to go. Here's our basic layout. And uh, shoot, I wasn't planning on doing that, but we have the equipment. Let's go bend it. Let's make the piece. So here we are at the break, and we are going to cut this piece off at the blue line. Remember, that was our cut line. And uh, so I'm going to put this in the break, line the line up, do my best to get everything aligned. And fingers clear, time to cut. There is our first piece. And you should still be able to see all of our markings on this piece. And if I did a good job of cutting it, you'd see half of my line. I need to begin by selecting the proper radius call. These are not great radius calls. I have some pretty crappy equipment across here. But we're going to go ahead and stuff that in place. And now, just as promised, we want to stick the side that we made an X into onto the bottom. I'm going to pull a couple of these out because this isn't really thick enough for that. This will support us well enough to do our work. We're going to stuff this into the brake. When our eyes are directly above the brake, we should be able to just see our green sight line. Now, that means that our red bend tangent line is directly underneath the bottom of the curve. I tighten this up. I should just be able to see the green line right across here, and we should be able to bend our 90 degree bend. And here is our one inch by two inch angle. Looks like I bent it just a tiny bit too far. Let's straighten it just a mite. 
I like that 90 degrees a little better. And now, if I can get you to zoom right in right here, look carefully and you can see my bend begins at the red bend tangent line, sweeps around to the other red bend tangent line, and it continues. That is ideally how we make this happen. I normally like to do this with a caliper and be a lot more precise with my measurements, so this may not be exact, but if you look real close here, oh boy, that's awfully close to exactly two inches, isn't it? Let's see how this side came out. Yeah, I'm just a tiny bit off on this side, and that's probably because my measurements were just kind of eyed in and gone, yeah, that's about 0.752. So I'm within uh, about a, uh, almost, almost within a 30 second on making that, and that's not bad for just eyeing stuff in. If we'd used a caliper and had better equipment, we would have been dead on. All right.